When you understand this Christ who offers forgiveness, it is a message that is unparalleled. In Hinduism, you pay with karma. The Hindus would argue Epstein paid with karma. In Islam, you never know what you're paying with because you hope your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds. But the grace of Jesus Christ comes to you and says, if any man comes unto me, I will in no wise cast him out. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for your support. My name is Chris Siegler. I post content on YouTube for the channel. I will follow the pursuit of righteousness. We appreciate your support, not just on this channel for liking and subscribing, but also keeping in touch with us over on the Facebook channel. You guys have been great. We hope to give you practical information about God that you can apply to your life and improve your relationships with other people. And more importantly, continue on this incredible path towards being righteous. So why am I making this video today? Well, it's kind of a funny story. This is really a continuation of the last video we made, uh, how to love others in 2020. If you haven't watched that video, watch it. You're gonna feel good watching it. It's gonna definitely light a fire under you to go out and make a difference. Now, this video is a little bit different. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit darker of a video. My wife talked me, tricked me into watching the documentary on Netflix about Jeffrey Epstein. And as we were watching the Epstein documentary, obviously you know that it's powerful, that it's heartbreaking, it's sickening. But a few things stood out to me from the Epstein documentary. I'm not gonna spend my whole time here talking about the Epstein documentary. What I really wanna do for you is talk more about what the Lord kind of revealed to me as I watched this documentary and give you more of a takeaway that you can apply to any situation in your life. With that in mind, towards the end of the documentary, they're talking with the survivors. So these women obviously have been through a lot. You know, 14, 15, and 16, they were being abused by Jeffrey Epstein and all of his different clients. But after that, unfortunately, I feel like they were really affected by it and a lot of them spent years being trafficked by others or addicted to drugs, having pregnancies out of wedlock, all sorts of things that would cause stress, cause depression, cause more addiction. So my heart breaks for them. Obviously, as you know, Epstein committed suicide. Now, really where this documentary hit me hard is a lot of the women that were devastated that they were not able to get closure from Epstein at this hearing. Now, fortunately, they had a very gracious judge that allowed these women to get up and actually speak, even though Epstein had already died. Now, here's where my heart works a little bit differently. Very similar to the last video, Amy Carmichael, my focus is so much on eternity and is on the spiritual realm that I struggle in these areas. And I think you'll see that as we talk. I'm not apologizing for my heart working differently. It's my prayer that you adopt some of this approach and make it your own in your own life because I think you'll, you'll be able to love others and have more peace than most of the world. Now, the Lord speaks in mysterious ways, we would agree, to Amy Carmichael. He spoke through the gray drizzle, and he spoke through a quote that was on a fountain. To the Apostle Paul, he spoke audibly. To me, he speaks in a still, small voice that just brings about so much peace, yet so much excitement. So the way he spoke to me at the end of this is, I heard one of the ladies say, I wanted Jeffrey to see the woman that I had become. And when I heard this, I was just taken back by this. I can't speak to what she's feeling, but I, I can speak to grief, despair, depression, things like that. So when she says this, I wanted Jeffrey to see the woman that I've become, I blurt out in the living room on this couch you see just behind me, uh, 
Why? Jeffrey doesn't care about the woman that you've become. He didn't care then. He certainly doesn't care now. So I said it out loud and my wife's like, hey, hush, hush, just write it down and put it in a video. And of course, here we are. So you can blame her if you hate this video. So we finished the documentary and my heart is broken for these women. I'm angry at Epstein who's gone because I believe he was given over to his depraved heart years before. I believe he was a lost cause. I may be wrong in saying that because God can change anybody. He can save anybody, anywhere, anytime, any place. But I do believe that, that Epstein was probably a lost cause. These women weren't though, and my heart breaks that they spent years and years as victims trying to establish their worth by a lot of the things that they did and said. Now, I'm not saying that you should walk around worthless, but what I am saying is this pursuit to establish how much you're worth, you're fighting a battle that's gonna be very difficult for you to win. Once again, I'm not saying you walk around well was me shoulders down, but, but I am saying quit trying to justify who you are, what you are. Quit trying to validate yourself because that's a really tiring, tiring battle. I spent most of my late teens, all of my 20s trying to do that. Stop. So I go over to my, my bookcase and I, I start hunting for a book because that's usually where I go for inspiration. Praise God, he led me to exactly what I needed and I think to what you needed. Uh, this book right here is called The Mark of a Christian, The Mark of the Christian by Francis Schaeffer. And I was just kind of flipping through there. I'm not a big reader, believe it or not. It probably sounds like, and I talk a big game, but I like to kind of hunt and peck and find the things that, that I think uh, the Lord has for me. Here is the quote by Francis. He says, all men bear the image of God. They have value, not because they are redeemed, but because they are God's creation in God's image. Modern man who has rejected this, you know who I'm talking about there, has no clue to who he is. And because of this, he can find no real value for himself or for other men. Hence, he downgrades the value of other men and produces the horrible thing that we face today. A sick culture in which men treat men as inhuman, as machines. As Christians, I'm a Christian, we know the value of men. I'm sure you can understand when I read this how I was just excited, but also still very emotional because I wanted to do something about it. And of course, this is, this is the means that God has given me to do something about it, other than of course, going out into the world and loving people to the absolute best of my ability and trying to help them understand the Christian faith. But you understand how this applies to Epstein and these women. Of course it applies to Epstein, the monster who treated women like machines. But it also applies on a macro level for people, maybe even these women who don't understand their value. When you don't understand your value, nothing seems to make sense. So what is the value of men, of women? What is your value? That, that began to be the question that I was asking. Of course, as it relates to the Epstein documentary, but as it relates to you and I sitting here right now, I ended up in the, the book of Psalms, the 139th Psalm. Yes, there are that many Psalms. There's actually a few more than that. Verses 13 through 16, Psalm 139. Actually, this was written by King David, who is no stranger to being in trouble. Keep that in mind, but this is what he says. He's talking to the Lord, of course. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book 
before one of them came to be. I love what he is saying right there. And the reason I love it is because it answers that question that I asked you before I read you that verse is, how do we assess value to ourselves? Well, we assess value in that before we began living our days, God had numbered our days. He had ordered our days. Now, I know what the skeptic is thinking. The skeptic is thinking, so God sat back and said, okay, for you, Chris, for me, you're going to spend your life anxious. You're going to spend your life depressed. You're going to spend your life struggling with panic disorder every single day. Maybe he did ordain that. It's not my job. It's not your job to understand why he does what he does. It's my job to follow, to worship, and to honor him and to just bask in his incredible glory and love because I have a hope that is far greater than anything that this old world could offer me. That is how you and I are to respond to the trouble that happens in our life. Listen to what King Solomon said. King Solomon is a man who had everything. He had incredible treasure. Gold was nothing to him. It was like a penny. He says in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 11, this is in the New International Version, in the NIV, which I would not typically recommend without using another version. But I'm using it today because I thought the, the verses sounded good. He says in Ecclesiastes 2, 11, Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. When he says nothing was gained, he's talking about wealth. He's talking about women. He's talking about power. But I don't think it stops there. Nothing was gained under the sun. It was all meaningless. Now, obviously, in Jeffrey Epstein's life, we see these things where most of what Jeff Jeffrey Epstein did was vanity and you see where it got him in a prison cell where he had no hope and he killed himself. Does it not also apply to victims of abuse? Does it not apply to someone like me that struggles with anxiety, panic disorder? Does it not apply to even something silly, somebody who is angry at a coworker? Everything is vanity. We are all seeking to improve our status. If not, for the way that we view ourselves, we're trying to improve our status for the way that others view us. What is the right result when we are wronged? For example, these, these women, these survivors of the terrible abuse of Jeffrey Epstein, they wanted retribution. Should Epstein have been punished? Of course. The Bible says, vengeance is mine. Were they doing themselves any good stewing over one, retribution being taken on him, and two, were they doing themselves any good thinking standing before him to show him the woman that they've become was going to make them happy? Maybe in the temporary. I think what we're talking about here is this idea of moralism versus Christianity. Moralism to me would be trying to make everything right, trying to win all the time, trying to justify things, where to me, Christianity is understanding what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Jesus said, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. I hope you see the difference between the moralism argument and the Christianity argument. I don't necessarily know that forcing retribution is the healthiest thing or was the healthiest thing for these women. I think probably what was a little bit healthier for them, or at least me looking in on the situation, was to realize that irregardless of what happened to you, you were bought with an incredible price. A perfect man died for you. 
sacrificed his life for you. God made a way for you to reconnect with him. And for that reason, your response has to be different. As Christ said again, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. When they see your good works, they will know, whoa, this person is different. Something is wrong with me. This person is different. And of course, God is guiding and leading that as you trust in him. Perhaps one of the most incredible quotes that I've ever heard, I heard a few days ago by the late, I can't believe I'm saying the late Ravi Zacharias. He said this though, and this really sums up what we're talking about. He said, when you understand this Christ who offers forgiveness, it is a message that is unparalleled. In Hinduism, you pay with karma. The Hindus would argue Epstein paid with karma. Of course, what about the victims? What are, what are they paying with? In Islam, you never know what you're paying with because you hope your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds. You hope. But the grace of Jesus Christ comes to you and says, if any man comes unto me, I will in no wise cast him out. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I understand that when people wrong us, we want justification. But God's way of doing things, if you know and you love God and you have a great relationship with those around you, but you understand that you don't make your value and assert your value, your value is established in the image of God Almighty and the sacrifice that he made for you, whether you're redeemed or whether you're not. And if you're watching this and you're not redeemed, there was an incredible price paid for your soul. Either you will pay for your sins or you will accept the very fact that Jesus Christ already did. That's salvation. But to the one who understands his or her value because of Jesus Christ, I'm not saying he doesn't hurt. I'm not saying he doesn't get angry, but what I'm saying is he or she has incredible peace because when awful things happen to him, to her, he knows what he's worth because of Jesus Christ and he knows what's important and that is pointing other people to Jesus, letting his or her light shine so people see the humility and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. If you're watching this thinking, this guy's crazy. These girls were raped at 14 and 15 and 16. Look, I get it, I, I get it. They're awful victims of something unfathomable. But 1 Corinthians 125, Paul says to the Corinthians who were undergoing some pretty crazy things as well. Paul says, for the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than man. It's my hope and my prayer that you seek God's wisdom and not your own. The more wisdom from God that you have, the more of a light you're going to be in your community, in your family, in your marriage. And I hope if you hear one thing in these videos, other than what I said earlier from Ravi, I hope you hear that being weak in God is being stronger than the strongest man. And if you need an example, I'll give you one name, Jesus. Thank you so much for watching. I so appreciate your support. Please like or dislike and subscribe to the channel and jump over to our Facebook page as well and connect with us there. I try to post quotes and inspiring things. I appreciate you so much. Please throw your prayer request down in the comments. I would love to pray for you. Even if I don't know you, it would be an honor to lift your name up. I love you. I hope you're having a nice month of June. God bless you. Until next time.